Hi everyone, this is Ravan Nishia. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to today's session. Please introduce yourselves quickly in the chat. Good to see some familiar names here. Hi Muskan. Please introduce yourselves quickly in the chat. All right, let's just get started. So, how many of you are attending today's session with me for the first time? Or how many of you are attending have you have you attended before if yes just write the number of times you attended sessions with me before maybe 2 3 10 plus 5 whatever it is zero if you have never attended before all right good to see you guys here today <laughs> lost the count of manupam okay all right so those of you attending for the first time i am ramanuj mukaji i'm ceo of lossico and i'm logging in from delhi today and good to be with you all i'm we are going to talk about a very interesting topic that is how to prepare yourself for a career abroad so how many of you actually want to have a foreign career or work abroad an international career so just write you know so there can be two three situations right one can be that you are um, you know you're curious you can be 100% sure that you want to do it you can be somebody who is wondering about it only only curious right and i mean you don't you may think that it's something interesting but you haven't really explored so what uh, what stage is it in right aditi is like 100% sure risha is saying it's a dream risha is like i want to go to magic circles the word is curious curious antara they want to explore sudiksha uh, curious okay so good so it's good to know where you currently are it's important right so uh, whichever stage you are in you will find this interesting uh, you know generally the quality of information available with people about working abroad is very very poor very very little Uh, at Lossico, we have done a lot of webinars. I have personally done so many, hosted so many webinars with lawyers who are working in the U.S., lawyers who are working in from India who have migrated to U.S., France, Germany, um, UAE, right? Uh, um, even in uh, Kuwait, Dubai, uh, then Netherlands, right? People who are Canada, of course. so people who are working in these countries so we have uh, interviewed them live they have shared a lot of information but today i want to tell you uh, an overall perspective not about any specific country but how to think about this how to plan this how to work on it if you want to go what do you have to do how do you have to prepare how do you have to uh, take actions right these things don't necessarily happen overnight right it's not like you decide okay i want to go work abroad and you can just do it in the next 6 months it requires planning it requires thinking it requires resources it requires uh, you know for you to work consistently towards it to be able to do it right so so we are going to talk about it so that's that's the agenda today to understand what where the opportunities are how can you take advantage of those opportunities how can you build yourself up to uh, take advantage of those opportunities right so uh, let's see what are your questions so do you have specific questions about this do you have any questions what are your questions at this stage you want to work at best path to join clifford chance how is it different abroad than it is here yeah what about paralegal it is not about paralegal we we'll, we might have some few slides about paralegal but it's, this is not a talk about paralegal llm from canada with core subjects or the llp program for eight months which one is better okay what are the basic requirements for studying abroad what are the opportunities for indian lawyers in canada okay lot of interesting questions yeah let's see 
Super. <clears throat> what are the opportunities for working in Amsterdam? Very interesting. Good question. So let's get started now. Uh, let me just open my slides for the day. The topic is how should I prepare myself for a career, legal career abroad, right? So remember, preparation is the key. Okay. So we are going to talk about how to prepare yourself, not just you know what work is there. Because if you want to do something, it requires preparation. Uh, first thing to talk about is why do you want to work or live abroad, right? Do you want to live abroad? Do you want to work abroad? Why do you want to work or live abroad? Anybody has any suggestions? Why you want to do it? Any any anything you want to say? Why do you want to work or live abroad? What is the reason? Anyone in the chat? Lavish lifestyle. Entire family is based abroad. Parents want me to go. Okay. Better pay in initial days. And of course, better lifestyle. Okay. All right. So I'll give you some solid reasons. Okay. More earning is abroad. Okay. Common reasons for why people want to go abroad. Number one is quality of work. A lot of times you can do more advanced work abroad. And this is not only too true for science or engineering. This can be very much true for, say, uh, for lawyers. Let's say in merger and acquisition or international commercial arbitration. You might be able to work on much larger deals, much more complex matters. You might be able to work with, you know, uh, things that are not even there in India. Doesn't even exist. Like for example, if you want to work in uh, fintech. India is, I mean, there are much more, there are jurisdictions where fintech law, laws are highly developed and there is a lot of work in fintech for lawyers. So for example, Dubai or Japan, Korea, Australia, even they have, uh, you know, there are, India, for example, is almost banning, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies, right? But there are a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, crypto uh, jurisdictions where cryptocurrencies are welcome, and all of, from all over the world, people have moved to those countries for cryptocurrencies. And there is many such advanced areas where, if you want to work, you need to. I mean, there is more work, advanced work in such jurisdictions. Then quality of life. So somebody mentioned this that you know, quality of life can be significantly better in many countries abroad. And uh, for example, if you are working in a law firm in India, it is expected that you will be working crazy number of hours. And you may say that, no, I want to work in Europe because in Europe, lawyers don't work this much, right? They have a much better um, timing. Like I once interviewed my batchmate who's now working in Switzerland in international commercial arbitration in an international law firm, US law firm based out of Geneva in a Geneva office. And he said that, you know, of course, he has weekends. He doesn't work on the weekends. He has, uh, you know, he has to work for lesser hours a day, right? So that's also a, an important factor for many people for wanting to work abroad and not in India. Um, I remember once I interviewed Saresh Jaiwala, right? So uh, he is somebody who has... Who, who set up a law firm in UK and he has worked with like, you know, many countries. He has worked for Russian government. He has worked for Chinese government. He has worked for Dalai Lama. He has worked for uh, Indira Gandhi and, you know, Amitabh Bachchan and lots, right? So, and in UK courts and, and, and so much very interesting stories, uh, you know, and he works for, for international clients and and it was very very interesting listening to his stories and there are many people who want that kind of international exposure which is not possible in india and therefore they want to work abroad another reason people many many people want to work abroad is they want to work in a more global environment and later build global businesses right so many people actually are uh, looking to get some exposure in you know, in a global environment, like for example, one of my co-founders, right, uh, is is uh, um, 
Komal Shah, and she has worked in Ireland with Citibank, with Northern Trust Bank, in their compliance department. So the kind of uh, expertise she brings into India is is very very high, right? So having worked in such global environments. Uh, it gives you ideas as to how operate globally and what are the challenges globally and what to work on. So it's it's really good to have a global uh, exposure. Many of you are messaging me privately. I'll honestly prefer if you just message to everyone. Okay, questions will be answered. Don't worry. I'll take them one by one. Anyway, I am going to you know um, definitely going to answer right many questions. Anyway, I have basic ones I have already planned to answer, right? Okay, so you may want to work in a more global environment and later build a global business. And I'll tell you why global businesses are becoming easier to build and more attractive to build. In fact, opportunities for international careers are increasing. Okay, why are they increasing? Number one, remote work. How many of you have attended my sessions previously about remote work? And how many of you have not? If you have attended, just write yes. If not, write no. So I know if there are many new people. Okay, so most people haven't attended. So I'll quickly explain. Remote work is is really like the child of this pandemic. Remote work existed before also, but now it has become becoming mainstream very much. Why? Because with the experience of working for almost a year from home. people have realized that they can continue to work they can you know actually do a lot of work remotely they don't necessarily have to be in the office right and they are realizing that being in the office is not always necessary sometimes it may be necessary where where it is necessary they know it is necessary in other cases they know that people don't have to be in the office so in the us a very peculiar thing is happening a lot of people for even of the large companies even in the uk everywhere people are moving out of big cities like new york and yesterday also we had uh, even companies themselves are moving out of los angeles new york uh, california and they are moving to uh, you know other places which are more tax efficient which have which don't take too much taxes from you right then there are places where you can uh, you know have a better quality of life so instead of a very large city where uh you know you are maybe living in a small apartment and paying a lot of money you can simply move into a much healthier place with less pollution with cleaner air maybe you have uh you know you are more in the middle of nature and you're living in a beautiful place and you can do that right and people are doing it this is a global trend this is one part of it the other part of it is that remote work means that and i'm going to explain to you next that there is global talent arbitrage so for example if you are hiring for example a paralegal or you are hiring somebody to do a data entry job in the us then you will be paying at least us minimum wages right or you will be paying us kind of pricing for hiring that person but it is just data entry work you could hire somebody in india and the pricing Uh, purchasing power parity difference between india and us is 17 times sometimes even 18 times okay that means that for 1000 dollars what you can buy in the us like what kind of talent or work you can buy in the us you can buy 17 times more in india okay so even if you don't get 17 times if you even if you get 5 times or 10 times it's a game changer right so the cost of input can drastically decrease your profitability can increase and this is happening even with a, within india right so if in within india i am in delhi and i will be asking okay do i really need to hire people in delhi or is it okay for me to hire people from smaller towns because somebody is living in a place like bangalore delhi mumbai they have to pay a lot of rent right you might be paying 30 40000 rupees in rent and but you can get a same quality house in a in a small town for 3000 or 4000 or 5000 rupees that is the kind of difference right and there is this talent arbitrage happening right now even at law sico there are so many of us we used to do this even before the pandemic because we used to hire people remotely and we have been hiring people remotely for the last 5 6 years but after the pandemic everybody has started doing this too many people are doing this they have realized that there is a great opportunity 
even there are clients who are hiring lawyers in a smaller town like indore or jaipur or some other places okay because they realize that okay i can get a very good lawyer in such places at a much lower price point right so if you are going to get things at a lower price point and it makes no difference to your quality of work then why do you care right so global talent arbitrage is happening so that means there is an opportunity for indian lawyer to work with international clients as a paralegal or even an even in other ways it is possible that you qualify as a lawyer in that country and don't actually practice in that country practice from india and benefit from this arbitrage you know cost arbitrage certain industries have made employers realize that importance of the importance of tapping into global talent pool so you are tapping into global talent pool because you are realizing that you know uh, simply the fact that it is you know you can access a much larger talent pool just imagine if i have to hire only people in delhi then i have a much smaller talent pool but if i can hire anybody from anywhere in the world then i can find better talent and smarter people and more dedicated people and it is suddenly it is a game changer right i can find better people from anywhere in the world or anywhere in the country and this has already happened in certain industries especially in like it right it already is happening you can see that in india most people today are getting better you know during the pandemic during lockdown other people may have lost jobs but people in it have not lost jobs they have got better jobs they are getting better payment their salaries have been hiked and they have they are, many of them are directly working with foreign companies in the europe in usa they are directly working sitting here in india and they are getting better payments so they are very happy right now right today if you try to hire a techie a software developer it is very hard to find because they it's not like they are not having jobs they are having better jobs okay suddenly there is a spike in demand but these industries like it then digital marketing as people are working online and remotely very successfully then those people who are benefiting from that service are asking that okay where else can i do this can i do this also in legal work and because of that because legal is a very costly service in most of these advanced countries can i do that in accounting can i do that in legal can i do that in sales and more and more industry uh, areas of work are opening up for remote work and it is only a matter of time that there will be massive amount of work remote work happening in legal also and it is it is a a golden age is coming for indian lawyers i would say going forward because the kind of exposure you can get now the kind of opportunities you can get now in terms of international even sitting here in india your earnings would be better it is very much possible that foreign law firms will hire indian lawyers at a better salary than indian law firms are paying in india okay it's just a matter of time we just have to make it work we just have to figure out the you know the exact modality but this is a future that is extremely extremely likely and going to happen has started happening at some scale already this is the right now these are test cases are going on but you will see this spreading over time international businesses are more resilient and shock proof right so you know uh, people have realized that it is better for us it, this pandemic has taught a lesson right so many indian companies which are operating in india they realized that okay it is not possible for us to survive if you only work in india they started working abroad so for example many indian companies i know for example they have been operating in dubai but it was a small operations they had they entirely focused on uae they entirely focused on singapore and foreign countries because that was the only option for them to survive right even in those countries when indians are exporting services or importing any kind of thing because of cost factor they are now looking for indian services indian solutions indian software also businesses have realized even large businesses have realized that it's better to be international because in one country you can have a shock but if you are international then you have a better chance of surviving this kind of shocks right a shock like pandemic you know any anyway pandemic happened almost everywhere every country was affected but still some countries did much better than others some economies suffered more than others 
so if you are only operating in a company which badly suffered like india for example very badly suffered right compared to your working in multiple countries where some have suffered some have not suffered you have a chance of surviving you have a chance of uh, you know conti business continuity you can shift your focus from where things are not working to where it is working and continue to be in business so businesses are increasingly thinking of you know how to go international and international business is because of that it's going to increase another factor which is huge is the digital nomad culture is on the rise how many of you know what is digital nomad do you know what is a digital nomad who is a digital nomad have you heard of this term before yes no maybe yeah who is a digital nomad can someone tell me why are you telling me privately aditi you can tell it to everyone remote work and travel anupam is saying okay what what else anybody can tell anything in tell me anything more our digital nomads come on quick don't be passive type it out remote working from any place so digital nomads are people who are traveling from one place to another not settling anywhere enjoying different cultures different places and they love to travel right how many of you love to travel how many of you would love it if you are doing your work if 6 hours 7 hours 8 hours a day but you can you don't have to be in one place you can just be anywhere in the world you can tomorrow go to goa or you can go to you know turkey you can go to south africa and you can keep traveling around the world while doing your work as well how would you like it right so that is exactly what digital nomads do and people have been doing it before digital nomad is not new it has been happening for the last 10 years right so for example even i think i have been a digital nomad a lot of times during the uh, even during the pandemic i have lived in goa for a month i have lived in uh, for more than a month i have lived in uh, calcutta for a while i have lived in a place called shantiniketan which is near calcutta a resort town over there for a month less than a month i have lived in delhi of course that this is my base but you know i now i am thinking i'll go live in pondicherry and i have been eyeing the international travel scene when i can travel i'll travel abroad and work from there because there nothing stops me nothing says that i have to be in delhi and work from here because if work is remote offices you don't have to go to office you can work from anywhere why will you sit in one city and work you might want to travel around the world and work right this is a digital nomad culture and this is on the rise especially after the pandemic because if you the, the money we pay in rent in places like delhi or bombay or bangalore you can take that money and travel across the in you know in good places so this is the idea so uh, so so how many of you now have better reasons you had some reasons before but now you have better reasons to uh, i an international career now are you more excited about having an international career than before yes no maybe it just diff- Difficult for senior folks to accept this kind of work culture. Don't accept it. Nobody is forcing anyone to accept, right? Okay. Okay. So you have good reasons to I do this, right? Now I'll tell you what are the opportunities in law for international careers. Okay. You know, there's a friend of mine. He is working with a Chinese company from India, and uh, he works out of Goa. Okay. only one requirement the chinese company is that you have to be within one geographical location but you can work from anywhere earlier he was in china but after pandemic he is working from india and you know he is a very highly paid executive and this is how it it is like you know, there is no problem that you have to definitely uh, go to china and work there he is working from india from goa okay but it's important for him he has to be in the same location he can't keep traveling they have some re- reason for that i don't know what but most companies don't even have anything like that okay okay so uh, opportunities in law for international careers of course you can work with foreign law firms one of the famous things is that you get uh, you know a lot of people do vacation schemes with foreign law firms from top nlus in india you can do a vacation scheme right and others can also do but others i i don't think even apply or don't know how to get it 
but you can apply for vacation schemes in international law firms that is one and then they do training contracts with uk law firms this is common like in from my batch at nujs several people for example got training contracts with law firms like clifford chance ashurst um harvard smith okay uh, norton rose uh, so these are some of the foreign law firms who are eyeing and uh, they have some india work also fresh fields and they hire you know fresher indian lawyers through something called training contracts and vacation scheme is like internship what we have in internship in london law firm it's called a vacation scheme okay so this is what it is now this is one option definitely uk so this is the option with uk that if you are in a good nlu in india probably you can aim for this even otherwise you can aim for this they never say that you can't apply in fact i don't know anybody who has got it outside of nlu so honestly but i don't see why you cannot get it if you apply and you actually prepare yourself properly and you go for it properly you might be able to get it okay mostly people don't even try right so even in even in nlu mostly people don't try seriously i tried but i did not prepare so i did not get it so if you don't prepare you will not get it on one day suddenly wake up and say i want to apply you won't get it you have to prepare it takes a about a year or two years to prepare properly for vacation scheme applications and you know you have to build that kind of cv and that kind of thing for you to get it got training contracts right middle east middle east another possibility very much a lot of indian lawyers working in the middle east some of them have some existing experience and then they move to middle east right uh, there are a lot of people there is a lot of uh, you know international work that happens in the middle east there are a lot of people who are directly working in the middle east right after graduation but you have to make the effort of connecting with those law firms going there perhaps even physically going there connecting i'm going to tell you how later on but middle east definitely is another option one option is singapore there are many people who have gone to singapore to do their llm and have got jobs there there are people who have got it without with doing an llm also you know they went got jobs in singapore law firms in different kind of work uh, germany and france these are your other option this is in europe many people want to work in germany or france because of their great work culture right fantastic work culture and uh, not working too much as lawyers they are working too much and our working too much is two different things right so definitely germany and i know lawyers who have who are working in germany and france indian qualified lawyers when they succeeded i have interviewed them on our youtube channel canada i have not written switzerland but you can add switzerland to the list uh, i know two people who are working in geneva um, and one person even worked at lausanne okay uh then there is canada of course one of the top choices several of my students are in fact working in canada right my friends working in canada other countries other countries there are other options like japan korea any of the major economies honestly brazil uh you know it is possible china i know i am i have my students have worked in china australia new zealand but probably you want to work with companies where per capita gdp is much higher than indian because all of those reasons really apply they have to be an advanced economy there are only few countries in the world who are more advanced much more advanced economies than ours right so this is what it is usa of course right so next question is is doing an llm abroad necessary right is this question coming to your mind the answer is that no doing llm abroad is not necessary but it can be helpful and uh, what is actually for for example let's take uk as an example okay i know of people who have not done an llm in the uk or have not done any llm at all but they have they are working in the uk one is that they have got vacation schemes and then um, training contracts that is one option the other option is that people have qualified for the sqv the solicitors qualification exam earlier there was a different exam but now there is sqv if you qualify in sqv 
and then you build relationships it is possible to get work in the uk okay uh, llm might help the fact that you are there for a year and you are you get that one year to network with people and uh, you know, all of that can really really help okay so same same for other countries also honestly like you know I, i'm going to tell you what helps but llm is not the only gateway nor is it is it a guarantee so is it sufficient that i do an llm i'll get a job there or what do you guys think do you think if you do an llm in uk you'll get a job do you think if you do an llm in in canada or in uh, or in usa you'll definitely get a job there absolutely not okay in fact i would say uh 90% of people who are doing llm in those countries are coming back even if they wanted to do a job many people want to come back many many people wanted to get a job there could not get there very few people who actually wanted to get a job there are getting a job there okay so doing an llm is not the way to get the job abroad so do not be under this kind of illusion because many people are doing llm under this illusion that i'll do an llm there and i'll get a job this used to be the case 10 years 15 years back in several countries in uk in the us you could do an do a, a degree there and get a job right but that's not the case anymore right they have very strict visa requirements they have very uh, aggressive policies that prevent you from migrating there unless you have really worked it out many take assistant professors job back in india after llm from abroad this is true because that is the only thing their qualification because if you just lll do an llm some private university here in india also oh, you have an llm from oxford you have an llm from harvard you have an llm from university of pennsylvania they'll hire you okay uh, because it is a good thing to show off to their students right my pro potential students but otherwise it doesn't help you much i mean that llm will not help you to get a job there are other things you need to do you can you also use the llm to your benefit i'll tell you how and what okay but don't count fully on the llm alone to get a job abroad okay it's not going to work so few things you need to do what are the things you need to do so you guys are ready you have pen notebook don't just listen to it you'll forget everything these are the action points i'm going to talk about right so are you ready with pen notebook thinking cap everything yes no maybe okay super let's get started impeccable english okay how many of you have impeccable english if impeccable write impeccable otherwise write no so i know that you don't have impeccable english okay only four people have responded five people six people have responded seven eight I, what are you guys doing answer you don't know if it is impeccable or not maybe okay so maybe you want work nazim nazam right and uh, you if it is no it will not work right if you don't work you need to start working on your english there is a lot more to do but you need to at least ensure you have very good english this is your currency without this you are not going any further right is that clear you are clear yeah clear right clear if you are clear that you need to work on your english and make sure it is impeccable okay super next learning from learning foreign languages this is very very important it doesn't matter even if you are going to work in a country like usa or uk where you know the english that is okay right that's not enough right it is better if you know more languages okay because you are going to work in a global environment you are you are going to be valuable as a global attorney with global exposure and the languages you know matter even if you are applying for uh, for a foreign law firm like in a london law firm or a dubai law firm for your um, what do you call um, uh, you know uh, training contract or vacation scheme etc okay it matters how many foreign languages you know there was one girl in nujs and she was very smart she was uh, she wanted to work abroad from the beginning and wanted to get into one of these law firms right from the start 
she started working on learning languages she learned russian which is very rare language to find she learned chinese this is also very highly in demand right because it is harder to learn for most people if you are going to work in the usa on the other hand learning spanish will be really a good idea because there so many people there are a lot of hispanic people there are a lot of hispanic businesses is out there so it's an advantage in usa if you can speak espanol or spanish right you it is a good idea to learn portuguese also sometimes because you know french is also a good idea if you want to do something in africa uh, if you are going to work in dubai because a lot of african countries deal in french and they have huge e booming economies growing economies portuguese because of brazil and portugal of course portugal by the way is one of the hubs of uh, you know uh, in in europe it's one of the hubs of uh, uh, how do i say like international um, migration immigration it's a immigration hub so that's also important but otherwise brazil is one of the most important growing economies in the world um then you have uh, of course japanese is great uh, chinese is great because these are very important economies and very difficult to learn languages and there will be lot of businessmen who in those countries who can only speak in chinese only speak in russian and if you can speak the language even a little it is a huge advantage for you to work in those countries or even working in usa or uk because they can put you forward in such matters right so german if you want to work in germany you have to learn german if you want to work in france you have to learn french so if those are your target countries so you should know where is it that you want to work right uh, you know you you can't be like i'll prepare for everywhere one one reason is that language barrier if you are in switzerland then it's french and german both at least you should know french or german okay uh you know it's not about certification honestly it is about whether you can speak whether you can write if you read a book in that language will you understand right this is what is important scandinavian countries yeah so scandinavian countries even harder so let's say i haven't had anybody who wants to work like you know work in sweden or netherlands sure netherlands is still english is okay i uh, the people who are working in netherlands they said that they didn't know any dutch but they still got in of course if you learn dutch it's a big advantage but learning dutch is hard just like it's running learning russian is hard but the point is that even if it is hard to learn it is very rewarding to learn those languages because even in those countries you know they are working in that language and uh, if you know that language you have much more advantage okay people who work in um work in dubai for example they don't have to learn arabic but it is an advantage of learning arabic and many of them start taking arabic classes so that they can learn arabic right that gives them an advantage so if you are looking for jobs in those countries it is a superb idea to start learning languages which will give you an advantage right depends on where you want to work honestly okay if you want to work in netherlands go and learn dutch learn the hell out of dutch and then it would be like probably the best thing you will do in the whole preparation scheme of preparations right and it will even help you maybe if you want to work in england or in in london it might be actually a big advantage for you that you know dutch apart from knowing hindi and maybe other languages in india right they actually look at it and they consider it a very good thing that you know multiple languages learn two languages is possible not even one so one at a time maybe okay so uh, why dutch in england because england is not sitting and doing business only with english speaking countries right so uh, netherlands is a major uh, hub of business major hub of arbitration major hub of shipping work major hub of import export so they are london and they are working together all the time so there is a lot of times they are dealing with dutch clients right they are dealing with dutch authorities sometimes so do you think aditi that they don't need to know i mean they'll appreciate if you know dutch it can be very handy even in london when you are dealing with dutch clients dutch business dutch matters dutch opposite in you know, opposite sides right understood aditi clear yeah 
so that's the thing it's not like if you know russian it will be helpful only in russian like people who are that girl who learned russian and chinese she was aiming to work in a london law firm right she was not going to planning to go and work in china or in russia she was trying to work in england and she got it she worked in a in a top london law firm because they were super impressed that she knows two languages apart from hindi right so you know english you know hindi knows another local language probably because in india all of us almost know three languages unless your your mother tongue is hindi like i know bengali hindi and english and then you can learn other languages i know espanol i you know uh, then you can learn uh, trying to learn some russian i don't have to learn it's not a part of my career plan i just enjoy learning but if you want to work abroad this is a very critical step okay next step paralegal work okay paralegal work is not necessarily because you want to be a paralegal in life right whereas you know even doing paralegal work you might be able to earn a lot of money from india today doing remote work but even otherwise paralegal work is your gateway for getting connection so recently we have been speaking with a french lawyer okay and uh, we are talking to her and exploring opportunities on how we can get a few of our students to do virtual internships with her which would lead to eventually paralegal work why because they will build and they can they don't know any french law our students don't know any french law right but we want to make this possible so that you know uh, even if they are able to say for example translate some articles of that law firm or different things can be possible right they can write some they can organize some webinars for that law firm they can do some uh, you know business development related work they can do simple clerical work but what happens is that you are building uh, some kind of relationship with them which can lead to more interesting opportunities right uh, what do we mean by paralegal work so yeah i understand many of you don't know paralegal work so see you um, say you are not a lawyer okay can you still help a lawyer with legal work for example uh ca there can be many things it can be that you are helping them with administration of a case or a administration of a law firm you might be helping them with business development of a law firm you might be helping them with their legal work itself like assistant to them okay so paralegal work is work a legal law related work that you are doing for a lawyer although you are not a lawyer you might be able to do it for a lawyer okay how many of you have watched suits have you Do you remember the famous paralegal from Suits? Who was the paralegal in Suits? Rachel Zain, right? Meghan Markle, <laughs> right? Good, right? Managing their work, help them with their business, and a lot of time you are doing the exact work that a lawyer does. You might be drafting contracts, you might be drafting court documents, you might be doing the filing work. you might be uh, even checking court dates and lot of things like it there is no end of it if you guys want i'll just share one article with you just wait a second i'll just find one article and share with you that i have written <clears throat> yeah this is a this is an article on 10 admin and procedural skills to learn this is if you want to be a successful us paralegal right this is created keeping in mind us then i'll share with you more wait there is let's say what if you don't know all this us specific legal skills right can you do still something else yes there are things i'll tell you just a moment business development skills i talk a lot about business development skills as a paralegal because this is global the law would be different everywhere right but not business development skills which is amazing uh what else do i have more there is something in it is blog yeah there is something yeah go ahead okay so i've shared a bunch of articles take a look at these things to understand what parallel is to right let's restart my presentation okay so paralegal work is a way for you to build a bridge between here and that country build a relationship with a few lawyers 
who can then guide you who can be your mentor who it's like getting started in a way right so parallel work can be really helpful then you know you have to realize that there's the importance of your prior india experience also because if you have worked in india and let's say sometimes that law firm get some india related work which is increasing you know there are a lot of indian clients who are doing business abroad going international uh, they are acquiring companies abroad they are investing in companies abroad they are uh, there are uh, foreigners who are investing in india so they need india related expertise just imagine how the amount of uh, what do you call foreign investment is exploding in india right each of those investors have questions on indian law each of them have questions on indian uh, you know detail they want details of how indian legal system functions now if you go and say oh i am an indian graduated lawyer uh, but i have i know i have never worked in india i worked only for one year in india it's not good right so sometimes the fact that you have worked in india for at least 3 4 years okay it will make a huge difference in your chances of getting a job abroad so it is advisable that you at least get 2 years 3 years of experience in india so think of going abroad i mean it is okay if you can go abroad earlier nothing wrong if you can get a training contract right out of college sure why not but i'm just trying to say that it is not a bad thing if you have worked in india for 3 years 4 years that experience will also help you it is a factor okay that can help you collaborating with lawyers and academics in your target country so this is very important so for example can you be a research associate for a for a academic in uh, in netherlands right they might be writing papers in english can you be a research associate for that can you help them to do some research in india which you can share with them which they will then make a part of their research or work so and also lawyers right so maybe lawyers in that country they are, they want to write a comparative study of arbitration in netherlands in india same for us and india uk in india so you need to find opportunities to collaborate with lawyers and academics in your target country whatever target country you decided could be new zealand so then start building relationship with lawyers and academics in your target country and see if you can collaborate on something how we do this i just told you like find them and then come up with ideas of collaboration right see what they are doing how can you help them if some let's say there is somebody in netherlands and they are researching on global pri- privacy laws they are writing a book on global privacy laws can you help them to do their local research for india right what's the proper way to zero down on a target co- country it is your choice like you know look at quality of life look at which country fascinates you look at which one is easier for you maybe right actually for everything you have to work hard like you know it may seem that it is easier to get in the uk or usa because we can speak english but then it is the competition is more there but if you try to get a job in a non english speaking country like korea japan china anywhere that there it is even uh, you know you have to learn the language ja- germany but you have to learn the language that is the harder part but competition is much less and there is a demand for lawyers who can speak japanese and english there are they and an indian language there is a de- demand for indian lawyers who knows russian because then they can collaborate you know uh, make things happen between these two countries it helps because there would be re- re- work happening between russia and india so it's better if you can do that i just did one for anupam is saying i just did one connect with through linkedin yeah yeah connect through linkedin why not right you can email them you can research find out people i just did one for a lawyer from singapore wrote a chapter on arbitration laws in india for his international arbitration law book fantastic anupam so i had given an example and there is somebody in this webinar itself who has done it thank you for sharing that okay so figure out ways to collaborate this will really really help help and keep those relationships alive continue to help them business development angle right can you help them to get some business from india can they can you help them to connect with authorities and law firms in india right can you organize a webinar for them here right can you organize a uh, you know can you get them covered in indian media can you get them to 
do an interview on super lawyer or on law seek or whatever like doesn't matter the point is that you are helping them to get exposure you are helping them to get noticed they and you're getting helping them to do something which will get them more business those things they are going to really appreciate right so find ways to connect with people like that then bunch of other things you can attend their webinars awards conferences publications join facebook groups there are facebook groups of international lawyers uh linkedin groups be part of in any way you can get more exposure right you can go attend conferences when possible right when you will be able to travel internationally you might want to go to conferences in that country get to know people all of these are fantastic ways of networking but that would matter importance of local qualification there are certain qualifications which will go a long way for example if you are qualified to practice in the usa or if you are qualified to practice in the uk through the solicitor qualification exam then it would be much easier to uh, you know actually go to singapore or dubai get work there if you are if you are sqe qualified you might be getting a it much easier to get a job in the middle east or in china or in hong kong or singapore right so that's also a good idea qualifying in germany france france may be next to impossible as a local lawyer but at least you are qualified in uk so that has some weightage okay for international lawyers okay so these things you have to keep in mind then uh, visit that country in person and meet 20 30 lawyers in your area of practice or in area of choice so it's also a good idea keep meeting people all the people there are many people who said i was trying to get a work in this country and i was not getting i was trying applying online from here nothing was happening then i went there i met a few people and i got a job right so some and people with stellar cv and great exposure great history having worked in top law firms in india they also faced that right so when you go to that country it you know if you are not getting just visit that country and meet people meet lawyers do informational interviews with them if you don't know what is informational interview google and learn okay but go meet people in that country it is wonderful sometimes really works it will cost you money to go there but what is i mean you have to invest if you think that everything will happen you sitting here without spending money i don't have magic wands to make that happen sometimes going there and meeting is that important set up meetings and calls right you can set up try setting up calls also informational interviews can be done over calls can be done over zoom you can set it up but basically you have to build network in those countries uh, there was one lawyer who is from aligarh muslim university now working in qatar okay and he shared how how he was working in india but continuously applying in those uh, job opportunities in the middle east following the middle eastern uh, you know um, job websites right and um, there's nokri.com what for example as nokri gulf right and there are many others also following those applying for jobs building relationships and then one day he got the job because he continued to try i remember some one of my seniors got a job in malaysia because he kept applying kept applying to certain law firms giving them reasons as to why they should hire him and eventually he got hired so set up meetings and calls right two virtual internships okay uh yeah antar ade if you think you can just go to a website and apply for foreign law firms and get it it won't work but do uh, watch my uh, my i did a like a webinar like this on how to get paralegal work from different platforms like upwork fiverr next there are multiple platforms do watch that because there i have explained how to get paralegal work but you won't get just apply you have to do much more than just apply this is what i am telling you if you think oh i'll just apply i'll get you don't get a job in even india like that do you think if you just apply to foreign law firms you'll get a job not happening <laughs> right so which is why i am telling you other things do virtual internships virtual internships not through those virtual internship platforms which is just like a tour of the law firm okay that is not enough you have to do actual virtual internship where you are being useful like you are helping them to research you are helping them to draft you are helping them in some ways so do, doing those virtual internships remote work again remote internship is very important okay
virtual internship is like what there is some inside sherpa.com that has a virtual internship that is not virtual internship okay that is just a tour of a law firm or a taste of what kind of work they do so that is not counted okay what counts is actually working with a law firm like we are working with a lawyer you don't have to work with a big law firm even if you work with a lawyer and learn the work that matters okay so can you apply can you help them with business development work if you don't know the law then try to learn the law okay then you have to build track record okay building track record is that so why should i let's say you are saying that i am a indian lawyer hire me in canada why should i hire you in canada do you have canada related track record you need to build a canada specific track record maybe you are writing articles on canadian law it's one way maybe you are attending events on canadian law maybe you are doing an llm on canadian law maybe you are doing some other courses on canadian law you know so which is not an llm a smaller course a certificate course on canadian law maybe you are writing the canadian bar exam and qualifying right you can actually as an indian lawyer without even doing an llm in canada you can qualify as a canadian lawyer there is a equivalency exam that you have to write in india then you can go and write the solicitors qualification and there is a solicitors exam and then there is a litigator uh, and so two exams are there two part bar exam happens you have to go clear that you can do that okay so you have to do all of that and if you build a track record and the more solid track record you have of that country better your chances of getting a job you will certainly get a job if you keep building track record there is a point when you cross that point you will get a job right and that point is that you are very good as a i mean you have so much uh, to show that what you have done for that country related to that people realize that you have skin in the game because hey i just want a job in canada but you don't i don't know anything about canada i don't know what it is i haven't done anything to get it nobody is going to give you a job right so you have to show why they should give you a job instead of giving a job to a local person why should they give a job to you because you have done so much and you are so useful that they'll give you a job why will that happen that you have to figure out you need to have an answer to this question that why you are so much better than a local candidate that they should hire you and most people cannot answer that in india itself that why should they hire you in india so then to answer how why they should hire you in another country is much harder i hope you realize okay so but it is possible it is hard but it is possible engage with international business association so let's say you want to work in germany so there is a indo us Yeah, sorry, Indo German Chamber of Commerce. You can work with that Indo. I mean, you can volunteer there for the events. You can, you know, try to build a relationship there, become a member. I don't know. Do things, the intern there. Okay, but the idea is that you build a connection there. You build a relationship there, through which more opportunities can open up. Maybe you keep a track of all the events done by German embassy, right? So that you can be part of that. basically again you have to go deeper into that country you have to make relationships in that country then things will open up opportunities will open up okay similarly in any important economy in india there are certain you know indo canadian uh, chamber of commerce uh, indo us there are so many so you have to figure out those things who, who are those associations what is there be a part of that be part of their events volunteer for international events if there are any international event happening in india which involves those people from those countries coming can you be a volunteer there can, even if you're not paid whatever doesn't matter can you get in somehow can you because being a volunteer in events is amazing right so as a volunteer in startup events i have met the top most people today to whom you cannot get even access right but i have met them personally because i was an event manager as an volunteer not getting paid but arranging those you know arranging things for them so you get access to a lot of access that you otherwise will not get if you are a volunteer in events okay mm. if possible try getting internships in mea invest india invest punjab yeah this is a very good advice right you get opportunity to present pitch decks and network very good get international credentials can you get international credential what is international credential you can get do a course 
with a university in that country including llm or some other course and uh, you know you can whatever credential is possible in that country you can try to get that would help learn skills that are global in nature so this is another point that you know if you want to do criminal law practice and you are doing criminal law practice you are not going to make a uh, you know it's very difficult to go to us or any other country after that but on the other hand there are skills which are global in nature contract drafting for example if you are doing contract drafting then it is it is relevant in india it's relevant everywhere merger and acquisition relevant in india relevant elsewhere also investment law relevant everywhere it's pe and vc investment it's like shareholder drafting those agreements due diligence it doesn't change it will be similar across the world right so if you learn how to do it in india you can take that knowledge and apply in any country in the world banking and finance loan agreement securitization this is a little not exactly the same everywhere can be different in different places but largely a lot of things lot of concepts are pretty much same especially because banks and financial institutes follow for example a basel norm and international standards so there are and there's a lot of international banking happening it's growing so if you're doing banking and finance law in india there's a chance that a lot of it is transferable in middle east or china or anywhere else for that matter okay litigation banking litigation is not banking and finance litigation is not transferable international commercial arbitration right this is also a very good area if you want to be an international lawyer you want an international career you want to work abroad then international commercial arbitration is one of the top choices because obvious it's international right uh, intellectual property laws again i have talked about this before also why if you want an international career intellectual property laws is one of your best options simply because it is so international like the law patent copyright trademark law is same everywhere in the world even without looking at the laws of a country i can say oh it will be same why because if you are a part of wto then you have signed the trips agreement trade related aspects of intellectual property this is a treaty that you have signed and then you have to bring your laws local laws in sync with this trips because of this india also had to change a lot of our laws but now the ip laws in whatever the wto members across the world whatever 180 190 i am not sure how many are there it is same everywhere right so all economies mostly in the world they have the exact same ip laws section number may be different procedure may be different but otherwise the rules and everything like the actual law intellectual property law is the same so fair use in india fair use in america fair use in nigeria or china will be largely the same can have some differences but largely the same and because of this you know if you are an intellectual property lawyer you can switch jurisdictions relatively easily okay media law cyber law not so much okay not so much technology law you can say to an extent okay technology law yeah because it is similar data protection is similar across the world okay uh general domestic arbitration is not the same everywhere because arbitration law is only procedural law then you have contract law civil litigation like enforcement in civil courts all of that is not possible to learn of every country in the world right everything is different everywhere competition law also i mean it's not the same it could be i mean anyway it's a smaller app there may be some more things which are similar across the world competition law could be one of them i'm not very sure okay because uh, there is nothing that makes sure that countries will have the same competition law can be having diametrically opposite provisions in competition law as well many concepts will be similar my cousin just passed texas bar exam how i could take his help in setting up career there so he can help you by finding you paralegal work from texas and do paralegal work do business development work for uh, for those people right for texas lawyers build relationships with some of them and then eventually maybe after a year or two you can do an llm in texas so that will work human rights doesn't have any work i mean what work do you do if you are in human rights anyway it will be criminal law it will be different everywhere
okay so human rights hardly a career and then you not international every place will be different unless you are working for international human rights organizations which is not i mean there are hardly any jobs very few i mean i don't know 10 jobs a year in the world i don't know very less so you are passionate about human rights it's great but not the i mean do research your opportunities properly before you jump into studying human rights law try to make a career in human rights law anyway it's a national like you have to work at a national level right you have to work in india for people's human rights okay so one more thing i missed to forget to tell you that legal tech legal tech is an another amazing international opportunity you guys who want to work abroad must apply to legal tech companies saying that i am available to do remote internship legal tech find if you want to work in canada find out the legal tech companies in canada apply there saying that i'll do whatever it takes marketing sales whatever work you give me i'll do it same thing in any country if it is for you the country that you want to go to is uh, uk what are the legal tech companies in uk or usa or singapore can you reach out to them in uh, not only legal tech but reg tech regu- regulatory technology companies reach out to them okay how can law seco help you uh so law seco so the skills that i talked about we have courses around that law seco is focusing massively on international exposure remote work this is we believe where our growth will come from we are focusing on uh, you know international paralegal work so if you are a part of any law seco course and you have interest let us know we'll we'll push you for these opportunities um somebody is saying Okay, you work somewhere. Okay, I'm not going to say anything. Comment on that. So, how can Law Seco help you? Yeah, so Law Seco can help you with that. Law Seco can also help you to learn those skills. For example, contract drafting or merger and acquisitions, investment law, technology law, um, data protection law. Uh, we can help you to learn all of these things. We have courses where we can train you on a global standard. We will teach you skills which will be globally applicable. and we can help you with that okay we have uh, intellectual property we intellectual property we already have a course with texas a&m university which is one of the top ip law schools in the world and in usa top one of the top 8 so you can join that as well would i make a webinar request sure please tell me what webinars you want me to do in future you can tell me okay so i want to quickly share those of you who want to stay in touch with me how many of you want to stay in touch with me are you already following me on twitter yes or no if right no if not then right no okay so i'm going to share my twitter profile with you guys who please follow me there so that we can stay in touch right i have a webinar tomorrow on 10 skills i wish i knew while i was a law student okay So, if you're a law student, these are the skills you must have, must develop, and it will make a huge difference to you. Ten skills I wish I knew while I was a law student. I didn't know these skills, but I wish I had them. So, do you guys want to attend this session tomorrow? How many of you will attend? Those of you who are following me on LinkedIn, please follow me on Twitter also. Join on Twitter. Join Twitter. It's the most powerful social network that is there. Okay, Twitter makes a huge difference. you can connect with any lawyer from any country in the world on twitter okay if you are not on twitter you are missing out on opportunity don't be late on joining twitter get on twitter and definitely be connected with me <clears throat> there is no webinar on how to pursue a career in australia in legal career in australia on law seco okay <laughs> we'll do something in australia also If another way on vacation schemes how to apply sure we have a plan for doing a vacation scheme related entire um, workshop we'll do it stay in touch stay uh, you know it, i mean don't miss our updates be a part of our whatsapp groups and so on you'll see it from us. okay so i have a workshop coming up on 24th of december okay it is on how to make sure that you land a job before you graduate okay how to make sure 100% that you are not graduating without a job 
okay how many of you want to attend that is there any internship vacancy in law school you can apply at internship at the rate law school dot in you can get an internship through that email id apply okay so only shivani and antara wants to attend rest of you don't want do not going to attend okay we have a whatsapp group where we share regular updates like this you know events and even other useful things jobs and internship opportunities also so how many of you want to join this whatsapp group if yes write yes if no write no so i know yeah are you already a part of it you can write already if you are already a part of it okay if you are not a part of it write no and then join quickly okay those of you who are already a part of it are you benefiting from this group is it benefiting you at all if you are not a part of this whatsapp group please join hugely benefiting oh awesome that's great to know shivani so rest of you please join all right okay superb so you know uh, also go to lawsico.com/webinars lot of webinars are coming up in the next few days you will not be able to attend all of them but see what is on offer and join as many as you like register for them so that you receive reminders for them right that will be awesome okay so that's about it thank you everyone the out of 0 to 10 0 being pathetic and 10 being at best possible amazing how much will you rate this webinar and what are your takeaways from today's webinar what one or two or three points you are taking away that you are going to actually implement in your life quickly and if you attended this session all this time please give me a rating don't be miserly in giving your rating right at least you can give me feedback zero sense you didn't answer my question what is the question are these lot of things are being posted i am not sure post it again i'll try to answer taking initiative working hard towards a goal awesome superb because of pandemic we are mass promoted using merit based progression scheme what is this where is this scheme i don't know about anything about this is it an indian scheme is it like in some other country see i'll tell you something about grades right you might have bad grades okay it might affect you a little for the next one year but the stuff i am telling you to do like writing articles networking building your track record aditi you can overcome whatever bad grade through this right i have known people who have terrible grades but did great internships and have got the best jobs today they are partners in law firms anywhere in the world right so your your whatever i don't care what it is your grades can do not determine your future unless you are letting this be the final thing about you right doesn't matter what happened to you people even have i don't know like terrible things happened to them terrible things have happened to me but i did not let any of that define who i am right you have a choice you can still do better things and that the good stuff you do become your recognition right your calling card can be the amazing stuff you have done not the bad stuff that happened to you so don't worry about that aditi do the good stuff think about what are the good stuff you are going to do so that you are identifiable as one of the best right how what will you do that others cannot do or do not do or are not willing to work so hard what are you going to do right think about that it doesn't matter you know how much you score in your exam i mean i don't know i scored pretty well but i don't know where my mark sheets are it was relevant in the first job there to get shortlisted but after that it has never mattered i don't even remember what grades i scored i can't believe that i used to obsess so much about scoring well in exams i should not have wasted time about that at all there are so many other better things i could have done that's why i am going to do a webinar tomorrow where i'm going to explain what would matter much more than grades okay come to tomorrow's webinar i'll tell find parallel work in the country where you used to study very good before business development work absolutely go to tech uh, parallel uh, legal tech companies legal tech companies okay apply for internships and jobs in legal tech companies much easier to get in than in a law firm 
skills on which i need to focus go to startups and legal tech companies i'll try to find parallel work and learn more languages awesome fantastic so good lakshmi focus areas to work on redirect goals where i stand as a law student with my desire to work abroad fantastic what really happens abroad versus the fantasy told very good awesome thank you for this feedback lakshmi informational interview yeah it's a very powerful tool okay there is enormous scope for learning on that note let's finish today's webinar and i have another request go write about your takeaways one or two or three whatever you have go and write about, and lakshmi definitely watch the one i have done on netherlands already go and post about these things on linkedin on your twitter and tag me okay please tag write write about this tag me that will be awesome i'll be very thankful for that all i ask for doing this webinars and spending so much time on them is that you do tell other people about this invite your good friends to join my webinars tomorrow and other webinars i'll be very thankful for that right thank you very much everyone take care bye bye